Okay, this last assignment here inside of making decisions is quite a doozy. And this is for the Develop and Swift Explorations book. If you're taking this course, um, then you might have gotten stuck on this last page about leap years. All right, let's take a look at the uh, assignment here. I'm going to skip ahead to that page. And um, at first, they want you to decide if a year is a leap year or not by using if-else statements. So they give you all the logic here to determine whether or not it's a leap year. And, um, and down here, they give you a function. And they want you to kind of add to this function to make these, um, when they're called, equal um, true, false, true, false. So let's go ahead and run this and see what it's like first. So running the app here, and uh, it's crashing, probably because this is not returning anything yet. So I'm going to comment that out first, and I'll hit play here, and let's see if it gives us anything. True, 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 false. So we want this top one to be true, next one to be false, true, false. So it should say true, false, true, false if we're done. Um, and that's just because these functions are being called and they're returning a bool, whether or not it's true or false, if it's a leap year or not. OK, so let's take a look at their logic here and add to it. Is the year divisible by four is the first one. So if it's divisible by four, then continue on. And we got to see how there's like uh, it, um, the bullet points are kind of indented a little bit. Well, that's kind of how our logic is going to have to be with the if else statements. This actually is a very challenging part that I'm going to go over later as well. So they want us to figure out a way to solve it with a nested function, which means like if this, if that, if this, you know, these kinds of things. Um, but it also wants us to try to solve it with um, using a single level of if else statements along with conditionals that use Boolean operators. So this is the super challenging part. If you want to see this part, then skip ahead. Um, but I'm going to go through this top part, too. And we're going to go over just uh, nested statements really quick as well. So I'm going to make some space here. We'll just learn nested statements using this example. So the beginning of this function comes in, and, it's, and it says, hey, is this year, you're passing in a year, is the year divisible by four? And if it is, then it goes, the answer goes inside these, it continues inside these curly braces. So if it's divisible by four, then do whatever's inside the curly braces. Or else, I'm gonna actually put this up here. I like my else statement to be like that. Or else do this, return false. So right now it's only checking to see if it's divisible by four or else return false. The problem is that there's another statement it wants us to do in here. There's several. So it wants to check if it's divisible by 100 next. OK, it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to get rid of this return true for now until we get a little more into the logic. So is number divisible by 4? OK, continue on. OK, now is the number, I'm going to put a closing curly brace there. Is the number divisible by 100 was the next one, right? If so, is the year divisible by 400? OK, so we're going to throw another one inside there. So I'm going to copy this, throw it down here. If it's divisible by 400, put it there. And then we'll put another closing curly brace there. you got to make sure you close off these curly braces so that your logic is sound. Um, OK, now it says, if so, if yeah, then it's a leap year. OK, so inside of here, that means, is it a leap year? Return true inside there. Boom. Uh, if not. It's not a leap year. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, let's just do the brute force method kind of where we just kind of if else everything. So we're going to do if divisible by 4. If it's not divisible by 4, return false. If it's not divisible by 100, return false. And if it's not divisible by 400 return false. Okay, so now it's returning false if any of these conditions are not met. Okay, so I think, uh, maybe we'll clean this up a little bit, but I think that this might be accurate. Let's see. 
True, false, false, false. Uh-oh, this is supposed to be true here. True, false, true, false. It's supposed to be true, false, true, false. We're getting true, false, false, false. Let's see what's wrong with our logic here. It is a leap year if it's divisible by 400. If it's not divisible by 100, it is a leap year if it's not divisible by 100. So it is a leap, leap year if it's not divisible by 100. So is it divisible by 100? See, the uh, closing bracket for the 100 is up here. Doot, 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 doot. And so if it's not divisible by 100, it goes down here. And this is supposed to be true. Okay, so there's some fun logic there. Let's check and see true, false, true, false. Okay, so we got this top part now done. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit here. I like the way that's looking. Um, now the trick is they want us to do this same thing, boop, this whole same thing down here, but they want us to do it using a single level of if-else statements along with conditionals that use Boolean operators. The hint is to create constants that represent the three conditions and then compose a Boolean expression with these constants. This is kind of like a fun way to handle this, I guess, but there are other ways too. Like for instance, anytime you're doing a lot of if-else statements, then you might create a switch statement. In the future, we'll learn about switch statements, but for now, let's handle this the way that they want us to handle it. They want us to create a function like this, is leap year two. I don't like that title. I'm going to call it is leap year unnested. So let's think about this. We got They want us to create constants. The way we create constants is the with the let statement. So let first condition be, and it's going to either be it's going to be either true or false. So the, it's going to be a bool, and we'll assign the bool to the first condition, which is that the number is, uh, well, we got to reference the year inside of this condition. So this statement that we're going to make, we got to throw it inside of this function, actually. So let's, let's make the first condition, it's a bool, and it's going to be using this strange function that they gave us called number, what's it called again? It's up here, number year is divisible by four. Okay, so we'll just copy this up here, right? And slam it down here below, boom. And so now it's passing this year into the function here and it's storing this first condition, whether it's divisible by four. So we gotta make a bunch of other conditions, right? Second, third condition. So second condition is thus and third condition is here. And this one was a uh, hundred, and this one was four hundred. Now there was some difference with this second one. It's like this one else return true, and this one was else return false, I believe, and this one was else return false. So what I mean is the logic up here was such that the else statement returned false for the 400. It, the else statement returned true for the 100. And the else statement returned false for the 4. Okay, so now we got some conditions created here, right? And now we've got to construct our logic. Now this, you know, could take a moment. Let me think about it. So let's look at this again. I'm gonna just look at this one more time. So looking up here, we gotta do, if it divides by four and it doesn't divide by 100 and it divides by 400, it's a leap year. Okay, so it goes like this. Check this out. If it divides by four and, and then I'm gonna put parentheses here because we need to do these things together first. So. Uh, divides by 100. There's divides by 100, but you know how to do, so that that is divides by 100, but this is if it does not divide by 100, or it divides by 400. 
Okay, so, so then it's returning true. And uh, if that's not true, else return false. So a bit of like a logic trick, a, lo a logic puzzle for you. So here we go. If it divides by four and it does not divide by 100 or it does not, or it does divide by 400, then it's true. So we're looking at all these conditions and we're trying to meet all these conditions. Man, okay, so take a look at this. Let's just double check that it works now, okay? So we gotta, essentially what we gotta do is take this code here, slam it down here, and instead of is leap year, we're going to copy this new function, throw it in here, 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 and then run it, see what happens. It should give us true, false, true, false. Uh, I'm going to quit Xcode and start again because uh, my Xcode is not happy with me right now. Okay, so I just needed to restart Xcode. Uh, I'm going to run through this really quick. So here's the logic, right? Here's the function. It takes a year and it returns a bool. We're assigning these new things. They're bools. They're of type bool here. And, um, and it's going to store whether or not it divides by 4, whether or not it divides by 100, and whether or not it divides by 400. Then here's the magic, right? In anything inside of parentheses, it does this first. So first it checks to see that it does not divide by 100 or it divides by 400. Takes that answer, and then it also checks that it's also divisible by 4 and returns true. So this is the uh, the difficult part in this particular assignment, I feel like. But it's just after staring at the logic here for long enough, you kind of come to the conclusion that something like it's got to be something like this, right? And again, this exclamation point in front of a bool means like the opposite of the bool, not. It does not divide by 100. So if it divides by 100 is true, then it's checking to make sure that it's false. Does that make sense? Like. So it's the opposite of that bool. Okay, hopefully that helps you with this crazy assignment. It's true, false, true, false. That's what you're looking for is when you call these functions for them to be true, then false, and true, then false. Stare at the logic. Do your best to do these if-else statements. Later in the semester, we'll learn about switch statements. And um, a switch statement might be an easier way to go about this kind of solution. Subscribe to Crack and Code with Dave if you haven't already. For more videos, send me a message and I'll uh, see what I can do to help out.